Hello everybody, this is Debbie from Stamps and Stuff and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of be beautiful Lake Havasu City, Arizona along the Colorado River and the American home of the London Bridge. So I am on this morning to have a class, another class. This is number six. I guess I've got a continuing series now, huh? This is the Hey Birthday Chick, and this is a bendy card. So it sits like that so it can be displayed, but yet it goes flat so it can fit on an envelope. Now this one, I specifically have this breaching this um, edge so that... It will have to go in a larger envelope. So I have a A7 envelope that it will go in. And I'll tell you at the end of the video how you can take and custom make it from any envelope so that it fits exactly. Now I'm going to leave it this way, but you can. I'll teach you how to take any envelope and make it a custom size. So, okay. Now, real quick, we will um, go over a few housekeeping things. Um, we have the PDF on the, will be on the website as soon as I upload the video to the website after it airs on YouTube. Um, it'll be almost ready to go and so I'll plug in a few things and then I will make that post live so a couple hours after the video ends then we'll be ready to have you jump on the website so you can get the PDF there's a free PDF and it's got the picture of the front and the back I have this on the back now, if you'd like to, you can put a white panel here to write on. What I do is I write with a white gel marker. So I prefer having it dark on the back of the card, particularly people handle it and they get their fingers on it. And white just doesn't stand up, particularly if somebody's going to kind of display your card. So anyway, let's get started. Also, sale abrasion ends tomorrow. So it's your last opportunity to join and get the extra perks for the $99 fee to join Stampin' Up. You get $125 worth of merchandise from the catalog, and that's anything your little old heart desires. You get five packs of designer series paper. That's all four of the Stampin' Up! color families, plus the uh, current in color, and um, they are also in the new designs coming out in the, the catalog coming out this summer. So then you get free shipping. You get a voucher for a free paper pumpkin. So that's over $200 in value. So if you're going to join, you need to do it now. And I'd love to have you on my team. And there's lots of perks uh, for being on my team and we have lots of fun. We have it's like a family. So anyway uh, Now's your opportunity you got today and tomorrow it ends tomorrow So it tomorrow's the last day. So if you're gonna do it do it now So let's get going here on this card. It is it is really fun and um, I did a bendy card for my online classes to go with the Hydrangea Haven and it, they really turned out pretty but I'm kind of hooked on the bendy cards now because if you want somebody to display something it really is a, um, a good card fun fold for them to use and it really is easy it looks like it's all kind of intricate but it's not it's really easy so uh, let's get going here and remember all the dimensions are on the PDF which is a free uh, download printable version it's my gift to you for the class also we had several people ask about the glitter and see, I, I have these glittered and I have the um, 
top of the cupcake glittered and with the other hay chicks I had them glittered and what this is I have this in a in, it's in a drawer at the uh, embossing station for my class to get to if they want to glitter anything but what this is now I do use Wink of Stella I have several Wink of Stellas and I love them but as far as on video it has that extra glitz and it really shows up on the camera and I have some that just absolutely have to have glitter on their project so I have that. What this is is Prisma Glitter and I like Prisma Glitter because it's very fine and it really looks good. There's a lot of the glitters that they're not fine enough and it looks like gravel on the card so it just... Um, this, this one happens to be Hero Arts. I know they're available other places, but what I do is I take the Stampin' Up! Fine Tip Glue and I will go around the image. Say I was doing this, I will go around the image and then just keep filling it in so that I have a complete dome and I make sure when I... And I use this as... Uh, we used to have Crystal Lacquer and Crystal Effects uh, when I had the stamp store and um, but this works the same in other words when it dries it dries clear and so you can use it at the same as you would the uh, crystal effects or the the um, crystal, uh, crystal lacquer um, I think Stampin' Up! has um, but I'm not sure shimmery crystal effects but I'm not sure. I think I want to say this is discontinued, but I'm not sure. I'll let you know in the comments below. I will check that out because this is a good product too. So anyway, you want to keep going around. In other words, you build the dam around the outside and keep filling it in and then look at it. And you want to make sure that you get even coverage and there's not, not a lot of dimples in it. And then I take the the glitter like this and I put it under and I hold it up and I kind of give it this. So that's that's how I put the um, the glitter on. It's very easy and I hope that answered everybody's questions there. Okay, let me get my parts and pieces here. Also, I always have a tray that I have my little pieces in and I try and get everybody to use them in class also because uh, otherwise they end up traveling around at different our different stations or on the floor or when I'm doing a demo, when I miss something, I'll have to go get something else and then when I go to clean up around me, I find my little pieces. They kind of work their way off the edge. So that's just a good way to, um, to keep all those little bits corralled. Okay. I will, we'll work with these envelopes here later. I'll show you how to do that. Get all the pieces. Now, when I am coloring uh, my chicks... I always write a um, kind of what colors I think I'm going to use and I label them so that I can refer to them later. I, I leave it in, in the stamp set. But also, sometimes these colors do not match the cap. So you might look at the cap and you pick up something and you think it's going to be one color where when you see and it might show different depending on what papers you use too. papers make a big, big difference. And there's papers that are really good for pencils. There's good papers that are good for alcohol markers, the blends and the Copics. Um, it's just know your paper because you might think you're getting a good deal on a car on a cardstock and then you only find out it's really good for either a die cut or you know a layer or something like that you can't really do any technique on it some uh, papers will suck uh, embossing powder down into where 
uh, you want that embossing powder to stay up on top so that it forms that enamel-like image. So the thing is, know your paper. And if you think you're getting a, getting a good deal on a paper, sometimes it isn't. Um, so anyway, that's kind of your tip of the day. Okay, now this is um, the, the backing paper. And what I've already done is I, whoop, throwing it here. I have already embossed on the back and I've already colored the chicks too. You guys have seen me color through these chicks enough that um, you don't need to see that again. So now also this paper here, you're going to want to Fold it in half and I like to crease it because this is going to have a bend to it. Then you're going to take this paper and this one and this I have stamped with the um, with the all wired up and how I um, stamp this I put the stamp on my big block and I lay it in front of me and then I will ink it up and then I will put this there and then I will take a blank piece of paper just uh, typing paper I have over at my uh, stamping station I just have sheets of paper there put it on there and then just rub like this so and then I will lift it up like that and you should get a good image now there's times particularly if you want something that's kind of distressed in vintage I might put it down and I might rub here and rub there and rub there because I don't want the image through exactly like this and it really is a cool effect and particularly when you're collaging you'll want to do that too so you don't always have to have the entire image on on your project okay <clears throat> and i did the same with the wood i laid it down just like that and I put, uh, I put my color on it. And the wood will look different depending on what color you use. Now this is um, the Sahara Sand. But you can also, there was one of them that I did it on gray with uh, a different a gray ink. And uh, it, it kind of had that washed out, almost a patina look to it. So anyway, so try different colors, different papers, different inks, and you get different, different results. So the dry brush is good. There's another one that I used. I can't think of the name of it on one of the cards. And then um, there's one in the catalog too that has it's it's just a, it's shaped kind of like this but it's wood textured and it really is a cool stamp i can't remember exactly what it is so then this is the stamp set and the die that we're using today okay so now what i'm going to do here is i am going to take this layer and I am going to put it on this middle panel. And what this is going to do is this is going to go on here. And let me get that a little more even there. And that's one thing I love this glue. Except, yeah is you can manipulate it and move it around because it takes a while to tack up and start to stick and you it's still pliable then to move around but then once it sticks it is a very uh very good glue 
Okay, now I this is a centering ruler here, and I am going to find the center of this up on the top, and so I can see that's that is centered. So I am going to take and I'm going to mark that. And then I'm going to get my scoring tool. And for this, I, I prefer using the Simply Scored versus my cutter because I want this to really score deep because it's going to have to go through two, two um, layers of cardstock. And I, I like when I score, I like to have a good score. And this one is particularly important because of the bendy card. See, you can, you can see that on the bottom and on the top. Okay, so I tend to even score my cardstock that way. And always when you score, when you're doing it with cardstock for a card, you want to score and then you fold away from the score because what the score does is it stretches those papers, those fibers. And um, I know sometimes you, you'll fold paper and it'll crack, and that's because you haven't scored it. And if you score it, it stretches those fibers so that it will go around that um, binding there, for lack of a better word. So, okay, we've got that one scored. This one, I am going to erase this little mark I made right here. And I love these Bic um, pencils because they have really good erasers that don't mark up paper. And I have a clicker too, but and I have three of them, but somehow they've kind of walked off. They are somewhere. Okay, so then I am going to fold this here. And then I am going to mount this on the card and what I want to do you want to make sure you put these together and bend them because if you go all three of them and then try to bend them it just does not work as well it's just too many layers that you are trying to get under control Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that seat's really good in the crease. And then I will. But you want to make sure also that it's going to be able to lay flat because when this goes in an envelope, this flattens down. But when I first set it, I want to make sure that it sets that this this crease is right in that fold because you want every all your mechanisms to work. Now this, oh I didn't I didn't score it. I think it's a half inch on both sides. Let me see. Where's my Oh, here it is. My bendy, my bottom bendy. Let's see. Bottom bendy, half and six, yeah. So I'm going to score this at a half inch, and I'm going to score this at six. And also, I believe the center bendy. There's a mistake on this. I'm going to have to change this because I've got them both at a half inch and six and that's not right. So I have to edit this. 
Although I have to make, change this because I added. <laughs> That's why I say I drive my students nuts because these samples always are ever evolving. I added the little streamers in this morning and it didn't have it last night when I did that. But I will uh, edit that. This, I believe, that's a half inch on both sides. So, rather than saying half inch on both sides, I said uh, half inch and six on both of them. And this is not six inches long, so you can't score it at six. Sorry about that. That's why I like to write all instructions before I do things the last time, because then I find all my mistakes. Okay, so now this is going to be this centerpiece right in here. It's called the center bendies. The bendy means that they're scored and folded to have shape. So this is the back bendy, this is the center bendy, and this is the bottom bendy. Did I drop something? Yeah, I did. Yep, see what I mean? Stuff travels around here. That's why uh, even I keep all of this stuff corralled, but even what you're working with travels, you know? So, okay, now I am going to take this one. And this is one that is stamped, and these are all the the measurements and everything are all in your also one thing you'll want to do that I forgot on this is this panel here. You're going to want to edge it with your soft suede. And see how this one is done on the edges. So anyway, it's kind of too late to do that because I'd mess up the white. Now this is on is the bottom bendy, but I'm going to put this in the middle on here. Whoop. Because this has got an edge, what I want to do is I want to distress these edges before I put this on because this, uh, this panel here is larger. And what I'm going to end up doing is right along the edge, I'm going to mount the fence. See, we're going to build a fence today. Okay, get this on here. See, this card is really a very simple card. And what is really cool is, um, you know, your cards that uh, you have a fold that comes along and... Um, It looks all complicated, but it's not. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to set these fence poles. Get my little tweezers here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue right at the base because I'm not gluing it along the whole thing. And because I've set this in the center, what I'm going to do is I am going to put it right... See right there, right where your edge is along this paper? Now this paper is framed in on both sides, but you want to make sure there's, you know, enough room on the top to mount your fence in. Okay, now I'm going to go with the 
the second panel. I should have my silicone sheet here so I don't get it that that way I'm not having to clean it off of my glass here I think there's only well actually not even that so I'm going to put this here and put that up yep Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to clip this right there. And I always have a pair of old scissors that have these scissors. I bet you I have had these for 35, 40 years. They have just been around for a long time. but they're just a good general all-purpose scissor. And they're great for having in the craft room. Okay. Now then, what I'm going to do here and I'm going to center this well, I can just, no, I want to do this with my centering rule, ruler. Okay. that right there no. something that's gonna get okay now I'm going to take and distress these edges okay now then I think this measurement here is I've got it about seven eighths from the top. So I'm going to glue this in here. Now this is going to pop out. I want a mountain fold there, but I want this right in and what you can do too is you can set that because you can see you can't see it on the on the camera but you can see it i don't know if i can get that up close enough right here is the score line and you can see right here where the score line is so you want them kind of right on top of each other and this seven eighths to an inch down you want it to be uh, up high enough over the top of this 
that you're going to be able to see everything. Okay, now what I want to do here, which will be easier than what I did, was... these okay I want to put these on before I this one on here and because these are moving and bending I just glued the edges I kind of want them to be able to float especially this one that goes across here and I'll put it on when I put him because I want to slide it in behind him. So just make sure we're working right here. Now I'm going to put um, the happy birthday on this panel here. Okay, I'm going to put the happy birthday over here. Okay, my fence looks like it, the cement has set up. So I am going to put my bottom bendy panel on. Let me get some little clips here. Okay, put this side on, let this set up a little bit, okay, we have that set up, I will finish this later. Now, I have these up here, now on the actual stamp. See, you can see he has one balloon, but one balloon wasn't good enough. So I'm going to put two other balloons on. And I wanted this so that when the person turned this to read the verse and your um, message, that they're not seeing the back end that's been, looks kind of wonky from the, the um, alcohol markers that has bled through. So I want that to look finished. It's like my mama used to say, she was a, a really good seamstress. And she used to say, the inside of your dress should look as good as the outside. I guess that comes from, uh, you know, Always when you go out, make sure you have clean underwear in case you get in an accident. Did your mama used to always say that? I think that might have been where that came from, you know. I don't know. So, so I'm going to put these on the back and then I'm going to clip this off here. And then we'll put one on the back here. I'm going to clip this off ahead of time because I don't want to clip his head off. Okay, so this goes on this side. I'm going to glue this on.
Okay, and then I'm going to, I hope I'm in frame here. Okay. Make sure I get my little notch on the right side there. Okay, looks like we're cooking with grease here. Okay, now then. I don't want to put my silicone mat under there because I've got glue all over it, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to put glue here and I'm going to put this down just a wee bit and glue it on the back. And then I am going to take this this one and do the same. Now, if you're wanting to put glue on, you can glue them and glitter them ahead, but I tend to want to do it at the, at the end. And I want to clip this so that this doesn't come and show. And I always clip that kind of stuff with my scissors, my just regular scissors, so I don't mess up my... my blades, get them all sticky. And then I, too, I take this and I'm going to curve it a little bit. In fact, you can curve your balloons too, which will make them look better. And I didn't do that. I should have. Because balloons are not flat. Well, they are when the kids pop them, but... <laughs> We always had a big thing about birthdays. We were therapeutic foster parents for about 25 years, so we had all kinds of kids. We would have usually five placements at a time, and one of the things we did was bir with birthdays was at the time of their birth, we had uh, we had cake and ice cream, and you know we kind of partied. But even if it was in the middle of the night, I had a big aduga horn. So when it was somebody's birthday, uh, you know if they were uh, woke, were born at like 1:45 in the morning, we got up at 1:45. I remember we had one teenager. And <laughs> <laughs> kind of blew her mind. We got up and had cake at one at one thirty in the morning. We got up and had cake and ice cream and played jacks and all kinds of stuff. And then we we uh, all went back to bed later. But uh, anyway, it was kind of a you know makes them kind of feel important because that's that is their time and. Um, those kind of things are very important. So, but we used to have a blast. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I am going to set him right in here. So I am going to put a good amount, get my little snot out of there. Kind of what it reminds me of. Put a good amount there. And then I'm going to put this. And I want it. Let me see. I don't want to go any higher than this one is. So, and the fact that the bird is curved will help it to kind of stay in there. 
And now what I want to do is I want to take my little guys here, my little chicks. Oh, one of them didn't get one of his feet colored. <gasps> oh my goodness gracious. We better change that, huh? Whoa. Whoop. Let me use that. It's a mango. There we go. Get everybody's feet. Everybody's feet are... Make sure everybody's feet are taken care of. Heavens to Mercatroid. Okay, and on this one, too. This, um, this guy on the back, he has a little... bow tie and i think this guy ought to have a little bow tie this one must be a lady chick this one is a gentleman so we're gonna put a little bow tie whoop ah well isn't that special heavens Let's try that again. All right. There. Isn't he cute? Isn't he cute? See his little bow tie? He's all dressed for the party. Okay. And I will put him right there. But these little guys, one thing about these glass mats, they're great because you can get glue or whatever you get all over them. I mean, there's a scraper you can go, but you clean it off with um, hand sanitizer. And, uh, and heavens to Betsy, we've all got loads of that around now. Hand sanitizer and rubbing alcohol. Let's see, did I pop? Yeah, I popped him out too. Okay. I'm going to put him kind of right there. And this little dude's going to go right there. And this one inspecting the cupcake is going to go right here. And I will glitter these little dudes up in a minute. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I am going to just glue these on both ends here. Because it's going to go over this and this is going to move somewhat when it's flat versus that. And then I am going to put this. in behind and then I am going to glue this right here so this is glued in two places but the the center is kind of floating all righty and then this little guy I'm gonna glue him on the back right here okay so that basically is your card there's the front now i will glitter here and i will glitter these and here I'm going to kind of prop it 
where you should really glitter these ahead of putting them in because I had to prop these apart so that they wouldn't glue together. Although it wouldn't hurt if they glued together, it would add to the stability. And then here's the back of the card. And now I'll show you how to do an envelope. Now, if you want to fix an envelope, you want to put this right in the center there. And I'm going to mark it about like this. And I put it in the center so I know it's even on both sides. And what you're going to do is take your cutter here. And you don't want to cut it off one side. You want to have it even cut on both sides so that this is going to look the same. So I'm going to put that... Okay, it's just, okay, right there. Let's see here. Cut this on both sides. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your score tape and you will put it, you want to make sure that you put it on this piece here because you're going to have to slide this in this way. And if you, if you put this all the way along here, you're going to have it stuck here. So you would take your glue tape and you would put it right here and you put it up to the crease there and the crease there and you want to use quarter inch or eighth inch tape on both sides and then you glue that and it works just like a regular envelope now the thing is about altering them this will cost you one price because this is not a standard size they're going to up the price so even though it fits your project better they're going to charge you more so it doesn't bother me but some people it does so it's like square in square um envelopes cost more to mail too but that's, that's how you do it. You just get a big envelope and you just slice it on both sides so that it's even and it looks like it was made that way and most people would never even know that uh, you have altered it. So, in the spirit of no naked envelopes, there you go. There are our projects and... There you have it. So uh, give me a couple hours to get everything situated on the website. I'll have to go in and edit that tutorial. And um, then everybody will, everything will be ready to go for you and will be ready. So anyway, there is your little cute little card. Isn't it cute? So... I've got three grandkids' birthdays next month, so I think the chick cards are will be well accepted, I hope. Anyway, so have a great rest of your Saturday. Have a nice weekend, and if you need any projects to uh, complete these projects, Check out my online store at stampsandstuff.org and you can hit the shop button and a drop down will come down and you'll say, it'll say stop shop stamping up and you click on that.
And if you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to apply for the job and I'd love to earn your business. Love to have you on our team. You can on the website, you can subscribe to Paper Pumpkin there. Uh, we're getting ready to have our Paper Pumpkin uh, class this next week. So there will be lots of, I think I've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight alternatives already besides the ones that it called for. So I figure I should be able to get, I have it calculated as 15 or 16 cards and nice cards, not just tweaked cards. But um, anyway, that's a lot, always a lot of fun and kind of a challenge too for everybody to come up with different ideas. So anyway, if there's anything, and I did have, uh, I think I took care of the glitter. I had some um, requests for bows. I will work on a video for bows. So I'd like to get some different types of bows to do and everything because there are different ways. Uh, generally, I tie the bows on a bow jig that my hubby makes. And... Um, that's, so that's how I tie those, but uh, I will show you exactly how that works, how to do it on your fingers, um, just different types of bows and different ways of doing them. There's a way you can do it on a fork, um, so there's lots of fun ways. So anyway, I appreciate your support. I appreciate also, if you like this video, please like, comment, um, subscribe, share. Sharing helps me the best, helps me immensely because what it does is goes out to other feeds and then somebody, your friend might not um, care about stamping or stamping up, but they might have a friend that does. So that really helps me to build my business and we will, we're at, I think, about 540 now. So we've had that next drawing. So when we hit 1,000, we'll have another drawing. There'll be a drawing this next Thursday. So if you do all four of those things, you get in for um, four, four tickets for the drawing. So, and if you let me know, it's hard to tell on likes too, because you can't, they don't always show. It'll say you had X number of likes, but who they were, I don't know. So in your post, if you can put like, shared, comment, subscribed on it, or, you know, I did all three, but I'm already subscribed. Well, then I'm going to give you four entries uh, again. So um, anyway. Let's make it fun. So, uh, and then if you don't win any of these drawings, not to fear, not to fear, because, uh, well, you can't see it because I've got so much on my table. I'm reorganizing in here, but we have a big pot. So after we have a drawing, everything goes into that. At the end of the year, we're going to have something really big. So if you don't win now, you might win later. And to our, I have uh, people from overseas and uh, Canada, you, I cannot per Stampin' Up! rules send you product, but I can sure send you a handmade card if I draw your name. So don't let that stop you from, um, commenting or subscribing or anything like that. So anyway, have a great rest of the day and thank you so much for your support. Your kind comments has just been just wonderful and uh, I really appreciate it. So have a great day and we will see you. This is, we will see you again on Tuesday. So thank you very much and have a great day.